What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Busy Dad here, you there, and we are checking out the latest spoilers from Force of Will's Curse of the Frozen Casket. And guys, I, I can't even pretend to hide my excitement for this. Uh, it is, I'm in my glory. These are some darkness spoilers and Cthulhu spoilers. It's right up my alley. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, uh, I, I do like to play the darkness cards. I love the all. Uh, negative debuffing uh zombie undead I, I just love all that and i love the cthulhu's uh this is going to be a great batch of spoilers so we're going to get right into it with the new dark ruler and i'm sure i'll butcher this pronunciation but uh umer at tawil uh, that's just a, a crazy guess master of a thousand keys so a human ruler with a judgment cost of one dark and x and it has the energize ability that all the rulers are going to have. Uh, if you go second, uh, you will get a coin to banish and produce one dark will at any time. So uh, no other front abilities, but um, that's okay. Let's see what we got going on in the back. And just look at the artwork. It's Yog Sothoth. Yog is back. Yog Sothoth, the Chaos of a Thousand Doors. A just phenomenal looking card. 1500 1500 uh, Cthulhu also a human with the limit ability so uh, it says X plus one and this is the X part of the judgment so when this card enters your field with X plus one limit counters on it and whenever this card attacks or blocks remove a limit counter on it so this basically gives you the ability to judge I mean, turn two, because I do believe the X could be zero. So your turn two play could be to judge. But whatever you use as your judgment, one dark and however many stones, that becomes the X, and that becomes part of the formula of the number of limit counters you put on Yogg when he flips over. At the end of your turn, destroy all resonators with total cost equal to the number of limit counters on this card then remove a limit counter from this card so the x and the limit counters that we're going to see uh is basically just a countdown the you're on the clock and depending on uh, for, for yag anyway uh, however many limit counters are on it at the end of your turn that's how many resonators get destroyed you have to be a little careful because it says destroy all resonators not all resonators your opponent controls so it's going to be a uh, board wipe for, for those resonators. And it's really just a throwback to the original Yogg from the Grim, who was also 15-15. And when he entered the field, uh, he destroyed all resonators with uh, that cost two or less. So I love the, the throwback. I, I, I love the, the little wink they give to the, uh, the past cards. Also, it says, at the beginning of turn, if there are no limit counters on this card... Put it into your area as a ruler. If you do, you lose 500 life. So uh, I like the strategy that this is going to bring into the game. Exactly how much do you J activate for? Because that's going to be your countdown. Uh, when the counter runs out, when you don't have any limit counters on it, I do like the fact that he comes back to your, you get to flip him over as a ruler. Yes, you lose 500 life. But, again, you can judge in the, the next turn or the turn after with, again, the darkness and the X and then put the limit counters back on. So, just at first glance, I really am loving this. I mean, yes, it's darkness. Yes, it's, it's Cthulhu's coming. But just the whole mechanic of this ruler uh, is amazing. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to getting this. Uh, uh, please, uh, BC Universe, if you're listening, when I order my box, please send me one with Yogg. That would be amazing. So here comes some Yogg support. It's an encounter with Cthulhu. This is a two drop, one dark and one other. Quick cast chant. So you can play this at any time. Each player banishes a non-Cthulhu resonator they control. So pretty straightforward. Uh, you play this and you banish a non-Cthulhu, I'll banish a non-Cthulhu. And hopefully I have all Cthulhus on the board or in my deck and I'll be immune to this one. So I like it. Here's Resonance of Madness, a one-drop chant, so you can only play this on your turn. And it says, as an additional cost to play this card, banish a Resonator. 
So it's going to cost more than the one stone. You're going to have to pay the, the one stone and banish one of your resonators. But look at the result. Destroy target resonator. So while you're using it's two for one card wise, you got to use this card and you have to banish one of your resonators. You could definitely get the will advantage if you destroy one of your opponent's resonators who's maybe a three drop or a four drop or a really annoying two drop flyer that you can't block. Maybe this is a way to get rid of him. So I do like the card and I do like the fact that there is a little bit of an extra cost because one by itself would be way too cheap for this. So I'm okay with that. This creature from chaos, one drop. 200 200 cthulhu resonator before i go any further the artwork i mean it's great i really love how this looks when this card deals damage to a j resonator destroy that j resonator this card is just unbelievable uh, if you remember the uh shadow assassin uh, that was a two drop that said, if it if it dealt damage to a resonator, destroy the resonator. You can go back to the uh, one inch boy that that did the same thing for blue. But both of those cards were two drop, and they only would destroy a resonator. Here's a one drop that if it deals any damage to a J resonator, the J resonator is destroyed. You go after the J. Your opponent has a J ruler who's attacking, and you can get this guy to block the J ruler. Oh, goodbye, goodbye J ruler. That that is phenomenal. I, I, just great card and great artwork. So. This is already a must-have for me in, in my Dark Cthulhu decks. Here's Azathoth, Hunter of Reality. Could be another big mispronunciation, but speaking of big, look at the cost. Two, uh, two Dark and six other, so an eight drop to play, uh, Human and Cthulhu. So again, just uh, another wink to expensive cost of Cthulhu's. But look at the uh, 2,000 damage, 2,000, uh, 2,000 attack, 2,000 defense, excuse me. I'm tripping over myself just uh, looking at the artwork, looking at the card. Uh, this comes in with the limit of six. So it enters your field with six limit counters on it. And whenever this card attacks or blocks, remove a limit counter from it. So again, we're seeing the countdown. If this card would be destroyed, you may remove a limit counter from it instead. If you do, remove all damage from it. So here's a built-in special armor. Uh, if this card gets destroyed, but you want to keep him on the board, if you have enough limit counters on it and you want to get rid of one, all right, remove a limit counter, and he stays. Remove all damage. This goes right back up to the 2000-2000. Whenever this card attacks or blocks, destroy target J Resonator, another card that can just wipe a J Ruler, and just by simply attacking or blocking, I mean, the card is so strong, and it's just getting stronger and stronger. At end of turn, if there are no limit counters on this card, destroy it. If you do, this card deals 2,000 damage to you. Whoa. All right. That is a problem. Uh, if, if you run out of limit counters at the end of turn, <clears throat> and check the wording. It says end of turn, not end of your turn. So I believe at the end of your opponent's turn, if, if there are no more limit counters on this, uh, you might get smacked in the face for 2,000. So um, that is a little bit of an issue, but I'm, I'm sure there are going to be ways around it. Um, Adombali, uh, just singing to the Cthulhu theme, you, you could banish him, and, and, uh, and if you banish Dark, your, your opponent loses 400 life, so that, it's kind of a nice uh, twist. But wow, what a really strong card. Uh, really, really like this one. The Gate of the Silver Key is a one-drop addition. And uh, you may pay one less to play Judgment Abilities. Okay, so I like that. And for two Dark and two Other, you and Banish this card, your opponent discards a card. So that is incredibly steep to have to pay four and Banish to make your opponent discard a card. But um, I, I, it would probably have its purpose somewhere along the line. Someone, you know, it, it pinch. It seems like a real desperation play. The Nameless Mist, another just great artwork card. One drop chance, you can only do this on your turn. Look at your opponent's hand. Choose a non-resonator card, and they discard that card. Then, put a plus one, plus one counter on a resonator you control. So, really great card. I mean, just for one, you get to look at your opponent's hand. I mean, that right there, just getting information, seeing what your opponent has in his hand is great. Then you get to choose a non-resonator so this works hand-in-hand hand with Scorn of Dark Alice. Scorn of Dark Alice, you get to see your opponent's hand, but you have to pick a resonator for them to discard. This time, it's a non-resonator. 
Then after they get rid of it, you put a plus one, plus one counter on a resonator you control. I, I don't think you can go wrong with this. For, for, for one drop, you get to see your opponent's hand. You get to take a uh, spell or an addition or regalia, you get, uh, something that might be some trouble for you, have them get rid of it, and then you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on one of your resonators. I don't think you can find a problem with that. So, guys, that's it. Not a whole lot of spoilers for Darkness, but, man, the, the ones they showed were just complete money cards. Here's one more look at Yak sothoth I'm loving him. Look at him uh, just getting ready to lay down the law. So, guys, tell me what you think. Do you like it? Do you hate it? If you hate it, what is wrong with you? But I'm loving it, of course. And um, please like, share, comment, subscribe. We've got more spoilers and, and more videos coming up. So, as usual, thanks for a few minutes, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.